Hi and welcome to the Paradox Development Studio live stream. And uh, my name is Boal Beerman and I'm Regina at the forum. And next to me I have uh, a certain Mr. Anderson, also called the King of Strategy at GameSpot. But we usually call him just Johan. So how would you introduce yourself? Did I take the red pill or the blue pill? I have no idea. Neither do I. Uh, introduce myself. Yes. Uh, Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. Oh, actually not wealth and not taste either. But I'm uh, the studio manager at Paradox and I've been doing these games for, I don't know, uh, since uh, since the old days when computers were hardly connected to the internet and you bought games on these weird shiny disks. Okay, so a long time ago. <laughs> yes. And we walked uphill, both back and forth to the office. Yeah, through the snow and the storms. Yes. yes. Okay. So, uh, how would you describe Paradox Development Studio? <sighs> That's a good question. We make games and we're a bunch of nerds, geeks, geeks? Uh, programmers, artists, QA. Board human. game geeks? Uh, yeah. 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 We are, there's, I think the majority is human, but uh, there are some people who are a little bit, we don't really know, we think they might be aliens from outer space, but... Okay, so th that didn't say that much about the studio, so um, our tagline is strategy is our game, why? Because we make strategy games, we like, we're, we're people that like making strategy games, we like making uh, deep historical strategy games. Well, we like making other games too as well, but <laughs> primarily we do historical strategy games. Yep. So, <coughs> our main games from the studio. Oh yeah. Uh, which one is the main? Or are we multiple mains? Yeah, we are multiple mains. Yes. Definitely. Uh, I think our most important game is uh, was made. No. Which one is most? Which one do I start with? I don't know. Start with um, Hearts of Iron. Yeah. Um, Hearts of Iron, uh, World War Two. You all played it. It's a cool, awesome World War II game, uh, especially the latest incarnation with the free expansions in Hot Iron Free and has this awesome, cool map, which has slightly too few promises. I think we should make an expansion that doubles the amount of promises. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, uh, let's talk about Victoria. I'm trying to drive her insane. Yeah. Now. Oof. <laughs> my brain would melt. Yes. So. Uh, Victoria is cool because it's the only game. It's a cool game series. It's the only game that is a really a social, political... I don't like to say simulation because we make games, but it's the only game series we made that is social, economical. Yeah. Or anyone in the game, in the world, I think, maybe. Who oh, knows? I haven't seen anything like it. We also made Your Brunner's Hollis, which is the series that starts and ends everything. But And we made Crusader Kings. I think maybe one or two of you have tried it. If you haven't, bye bye bye. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, you didn't really say what Crusader Kings is in case nobody has played it. Well, if they're watching this and don't know what Crusader Kings is, they yeah, you should know. They live under a rock, or <laughs> they just click the wrong channel on Twitch. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of questions that you have posted on the forum. We will not have time for all the questions, but we will try and answer a lot here. And then we'll try and answer questions in the end of the stream. And I have a cheat note here. Um, so I'm going to start easy with you, Joan. Um, EU Tony asks, how are you all doing? You must be busy with all these big projects. Keep in there. Uh, yeah, we're... I don't know what the question was. So how, how are you doing? I think we're doing fine. Um, I mean, since we expanded the studio from like eight people, we were eight people the weeks before Hot Shot and Free was shipped. And we're... 30 now, I think. Nice. Yeah, we're actually 30 because I hired two people. I hired two people yesterday. What? You didn't? Yeah, oh another program for Sticky too. Okay. Yeah, because we, we, we had not enough people named Henrik. That's a good reason. Yes. Any more Joe on coming? There can only be one. Uh, oh, actually, we have two. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Where's okay. my sword? Concrete wants to know what's the weather like up there at the moment. Uh, we're in a skyscraper at Södermalm in Stockholm. It's sunny. It's really sunny and we're trying to shade out all the sunshine. Yeah. Um, we think the winter is going away. There's still shitloads of snow around. 
Yeah, can somebody just kill the winter? Okay, Nathan Cox wants to know, I played your games, I learned your strategies. Why am I not ruler of the world yet? Because there's this thing called the Illuminati, or was it the uh, Freemasons, or I don't know, but there's somebody that controlling the world that's stopping you. Hmm. But the games will eventually lead him to world domination, right? Right? I'm not at liberty to say that. <laughs> Bloody bastard. Okay. Uh, then I have Redroth Wiggum. Can you describe the process for a Paradox Development Studio game to get made? Yeah, yeah, I read that question. And Bill, if you want that question asked, you could ask me in person a few weeks ago. Oh, my what? sword. A sword. Wait. <sighs> <laughs> and now you change the camera, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. We're still talking. Yeah, but... Uh, why, why give Joe on a sword? He asked for a sword. Yes. Oh, <laughs> okay. But really, how, how, how does a game get made? Uh, yeah, we come up with ideas. We talk about them. And we write them down. And some are good. And then we sit slaved in front of a computer for 18 months in a row and doesn't do anything and then magically a game appears on people's computers. Hmm. Now, yeah, but seriously, the answer is a lot more complex and I could sit and talk all day about it. Will you ever consult the forum via Paul to decide which DLC or expansion will come next again? Maybe. It's... Uh, the thing with that is that you get you let the majority uh, rule, and that means that we, if we do that, we may not get stuff like, I don't know. Yeah. Sunset but I mean, even if we don't do polls, I mean, we read the forums and we listen to gamers, and yeah. I mean, we get inspiration for yeah. what we create from yeah. the forums. So. I mean, t uh, two of the coolest uh, DLCs we made for CK2, the most popular one ever made, Ruler Designer, which Kotaku strangely thought was unnecessary but but they thought say k2 was the best game in the world so. yeah well, it, it's funny it's the best selling dlc or expansion i've ever done and there was someone like half a year before ck2 released suggested it on the forum like can you make this and i'm like yeah it's not in our project plans but we can make a dlc for it after release yeah. and people were like yeah yeah cool and we made it and people seem to like it i always use it myself when i play ck2 uh, I actually have a specific question here for the Victoria franchise. Uh, first, it's what do you think the future holds for the Victoria franchise? But then it's let me rephrase that question. If a madman were to break into the office, strap you to a chair, hook you up to a lie detector, put a gun to your head and say, tell me what the plans for the Victoria franchise are, what would you say? I think the sword put impale him first. <laughs> Or you would just lie, right? Yes. Because <laughs> that, that's the problem with the torture to get information. People will tell you, they will tell you anything you want to hear. But how do you know what they say is true? Hmm. Um, I, I did get a random question. I don't think it was game specific from Vcross. Will there be a tutorial of some sort explaining new features? Uh, I don't know if it's for upcoming games and expansions or but I don't for Europe and Resolve 4. Yes, there will be a tutorial. Yeah. Yeah. We actually hired a tutorial manager. No, an interface developer. That interface developer. Yeah. yeah, that does tutorials. So, uh, yeah. We always have tutorials, don't we? Yes. Kind of. Yes, but we're going to improve. Yeah. Um, hmm. Ooh, uh, several of you have asked these questions. Um, what's Paradox Development Studios' next big game after Europa Resolves 4 and East vs. West? Are there any plans for an entirely new franchise on a major scale? Getting budget and development time as Europa Resolves and Crusader Kings 2. Uh, uh, I realize you won't give any detailed plans for that, but is it something likely to happen in the next two to three years? Um. Yeah, we we actually got a huge big project under development and we will not announce it before Christmas and it's pro probably on those budget levels. Okay. It's not something we worked on before. 
So, something secret. Yes, the super secret project that some people have hinted about at the forums. That you won't hear anything more about today. Nope. So, let's talk about something else. And uh, both, uh, let's see, no idea and, hmm, I know that someone else asked. Uh, why don't we port games like Victoria Hearts of Iron and European Souls to tablets? Uh, currently, because our games are tooltip driven, so we need to make a good interface for that. There's also kind of fiddly, and then there's the little thing that they use an insane amount of memory at the moment, and we need tablets to grow a little bit in memory budgets, and we need, yeah. We also we have plans for the future, but nothing now. But you do like the idea. Yeah, of course, because to be honest, at home I haven't had my PC. Yeah, I had a PC on to pay bills a, a week ago because it's easier. But uh, I don't have. Uh, I play the games mostly on my iPad or at the office computer. There's an explanation for this as well. Uh, Joan has recently become a dad. Not that recently. No, no, but not that recently. Yeah. That, so, that, that, yeah. that severely cut into my raiding time. I had to drop out of my World of Warcraft raiding guild. Yeah. You, you know how, it's, how bad it is when, you, yeah, when you're competing so for server for you. first and you're a tank and then you have to go like, well, I can't play anymore. Poor you. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Dak wants to know how many DLCs would you consider is locked down to be developed? And do you have any limit on how many you think the game can support? The game? I think, is it CK2? Yeah, it might be CK2. Uh, the funny thing is that we, when we were about, when we had finished the GM for CK2 and it was like a month until release, we started working on like what type of DLCs can we make during the next year? We wrote down like I think it was twelve or fourteen big ideas. Uh, two of those have been made. We changed ideas, listened to forums. I think like it's not so much about ideas and content run and running out of ideas. It's more like how long will people still love CK two and keep buying stuff? Because as long as people buy CK two DLCs, we'll keep making them and keep making stuff for free patches. Yeah. And we also hired a DLC manager recently. Yeah, that means uh, that stream that improves the process quite a lot mm -hmm. because, yeah. Yeah, and she has plenty of ideas that are coming. We won't reveal any secret DLCs. I'm sorry, and expansions. Shall we? Stream. I can do that. We're no. We're, yes. Right. No. Yeah, for CK too. What? We're it's they're finished and we should be out in a within before old gods I think or maybe around old gods. We're making. Uh, uh, some is it called Celtic or Celtic or how do you Celtic? pronounce it? Celtic unit packs and Celtic portraits. So that there you go. Yes. Um, but anyway, more is coming. I, I, I like I like making her. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, yeah, a lot of people uh, are asking for this. This is kind of a tricky area. Converter, saved games converter in between the games. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to make one uh, a DLC for CK2 on that so that it exports through to EU4. Uh, the only little problem with it is that, uh, well, the CK2 dev team says it's insane amount of work and they don't want to do it, so <laughs> I need to s solve that somehow. Yeah, it, it all depends on how tricky it is and how well it will work. Yeah, well, uh, that C++ course I was talking about <laughs> to put in. Yes, uh, well, um, well, we'll discuss that later on. Um, hmm. um, when designing a game, do you often look to the forums for suggestions or do you have a pretty good idea on how the game will work before you start talking about it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think someone's hinting that we only have, was it seven hours left to talk? Yeah, seven, exactly. Yeah. So. Or was it seven so seconds? So stay with minutes? us. Yes. Uh, well, the thing is like, it's not as if we ignore the forms, we keep reading, but we don't go like, okay, let's uh, write down all ideas. It's more like, uh, is it osmosis? Is that a good concept? Inspiration? We keep, no, it's more like we, 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 we print out the forum posts and then put them, no, it's... 
it and just let them seep through your yeah. skin. Oh. Yeah, no, no. Actually, we read them quite a lot, and then like stuff gets stuck here and there, or sometimes you go like, "Oh, that's a good idea," and then you go like, "Yeah, but it won't work for this and this and this reason." But you still have the idea there, and then someone else talks about something different, or some people go at the local warm sit at the local pub and design. Uh, you go like, oh, this and this, and then someone has read something six months earlier about another thing, and all of this connects, and then you have... Yeah, so I want to I go back to, and then we go to the pub and design. Yes. Or we, we come up with ideas, and we design stuff at the pub, because like when you're sitting in front of a computer, you develop stuff. Design needs to be done in a relaxed environment, um, Preferably under the influence of the holiest of all fluids in the world, alcohol. The <laughs> Not all game design, I hope, but... No, most of it. I oh. mean, uh, that's how we celebrate the holy god Bacchus. Mm. But you usually have a designated driver that writes down the ideas. Yeah, we used to have that, but uh, then these things called smartphones appeared two years ago, so you oh. can just type in the notes in the, on your phone. And that means that before we had like the ideas that survived to the next day, that you remembered when you showed up to the office then at 8 o'clock the morning after, were usually the good ideas. The ideas, the survival of the fittest ideas. Hmm. I have the boss asking, I would like to know if the community sometimes makes you guys change your mind during your development process. Perhaps you can give us some example. Uh, uh, I the follow-up question is, right now we have an active topic on EU4 discussing provinces that players hope to be included. Uh, the brutal answer is no. Because uh, it's kind of like someone reading about music or a musical piece and then saying it sounds wrong. I mean, it's you You can't really understand everything. And we've seen so many people commenting about on our dev diaries. They, they understand a few things, but they don't see the whole picture. And it goes. Yeah. But, and, uh, but, and, but it's because the gamers haven't had access to the no, game no, yet and no, played no, no, the features. Yeah, that's part of it. And then people don't understand what they read either at times. Because we have this like big thread about like how the map is, certain promises, our guidelines, and then people in go like, yeah, but this promise is wrong. I was like, yes, but we explain why we do these things. And they, sometimes people, yeah, it, I get frustrated. But, but, but I guess my follow-up question is, after the gamers have gotten access to the game and tried the game play features yeah. and you know, do you listen more then? Because then they've actually tried them. Some people understand yeah. stuff. Some people don't. It's it's like it's easy to uh, it's always easy to criticize. But the thing is that it's very very hard to come up with suggestions that are not breaking game breaking or breaking the balance. Yeah, breaking the balance or not. They, it's hard to see all the repercussions. We also have those problems, but we keep. It's an iterative process, but you still need to consider like the end goals. I've seen so many user mods that are like, more of this, more of this, and we need to focus on that. And then it's like, okay, this became bloated, this became unbalanced, but uh, there's a, people going like, yeah, because it's more, and it looks more like someone's vision for something else, People like it, so yeah. It's hard to explain. Yep. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I I I just find the, it. Can oh. I continue? Yeah. I just find it funny that people do a lot of conversion mods and go like, oh, I, I need to improve the balance, or a uh, they, they made the borders wrong, or whatever. That that limits their creativity. It's it, I absolutely adore people that make this mods for uh, EU where they have like the random world map that's a brilliant idea for uh, for, uh, for 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 a mod it's creativity I like the people that made uh, a really really what's it called 
admire mm-hmm. the people that made all these fantasy mods that make a real like the Game of Thrones one. I like the people who made uh, alternative history mods and there's so many stuff for Crusader Kings that are not just balanced total conversion stuff because So you just hope that there are more mods I like coming, creati- right? I like yeah, I love creativity to see people doing stuff differently. Then again, I shouldn't really say that to, that balance mods are bad. I mean, we hired uh, Henrik, a, aka Doomdark, on the forum. He made a conversion balance mod for E1 called IGC. A few, three months ago, I hired Martin, also known as Wiss, on the forums that made CK Plus, the most popular CK2 mod by far, which is also balance conversion mods. Mm-hmm. But I, I just think that there's so much more creativity can be made by making something new based on the game instead of more and tweaking. Uh, but you actually mentioned G- Game of Thrones. And mm. I mean, we, we do have a very popular mod for Crusader Kings, yeah. Game of Thrones. And I, we actually got a question if we're gonna ever going to make a Game of Thrones game uh, on the forum. I don't think we're ever going to do that. We actually try to get the license ten, <laughs> seven, eight years ago, but it was too expensive. That was yeah. after we had made CK1. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, we're, we're all um, absolutely crazy about Game of Thrones. And yeah. I mean, the... F- I, I, want, I want to read the next books. Damn yeah. it. Um, when I started at Paradox and Fred, uh, Fred Frederick Wester, our CEO, uh, he actually tossed me the first book and said, like, this is something you have to read if you're going to work at Paradox. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're fans, yeah. but we're probably not going to make a yeah. game. We keep asking which house on uh, when people are getting on their interviews. Yeah, on their job interviews. Yes, and of course, if they answer answer Slytherin, that's also a good <laughs> answer. But, uh, but yeah. usually, and um, we don't trust people saying Lannister. Should never trust a Lannister. Um, okay, this is kind of a strange question, but it, several people actually said it. Um, Will we ever make a game with a globe and not just a flat map? No. Didn't, wasn't it Populous Free that had a globe map? And it's horrible in trying to get the good overview. Hmm. It just makes for shit the games, in my opinion. Okay. Um, we have uh, Gwildam who asks, Any hope to see a game that would span from the beginning of human civilization to the days of today? Well, there's a really great game that another company has made. A good friend of mine made the last one. Hi, John, if you watch this. Uh, and I f- think I recommend people to buy it. It's called Civilization. It's awesome and it spans the time. And I don't think we can ever make something better than that. No, and we're doing a different take on yeah, history. I mean, so. Yeah, and I still think that I'm the best game designer ever but i don't think i can make a better game oh you're so modest <laughs> <It's expensive. laughs> um lang drago sorry for the pronunciation any plans on doing a non-historical close to its strategy game um for example in a fancy setting or sci-fi uh can we take next question okay um hmm yeah <laughs> um Ooh, Mushroom wants to know, ever thought about trying the new Steam feature called Early Access with one of your upcoming games? Other well, games have had a huge success with that. With our games, Early Access means that that's the release date. Because what's the difference in a strategy game that's primarily a, a single player game? Yeah. Well, it, it, if, if we make our single player game, you know what EA did? Oh, that was brilliant. I, <laughs> I was just being sarcastic. I'm still bitter. I'm not going to buy that game. Let's not talk about it. Um, and I'm a Sims. Actually, we have discussed uh, early access, uh, but, but it's we don't know how to make it in a good in a single player game. That's really yeah. I uh, le- we'll keep that in the back of our heads, and we'll see what happens. Um, Earlier release date is the name for it. I hmm. oh, we have. Um, here, Elfric, two questions. He asks, first one is, as a history teacher, do you ever plan to make and sell serious games that are adapted to young pupils, easy to understand and practice? 
Her games are easy to understand. I don't understand. Well, they've been used in schools. Yes, they have. Um, if any history teachers from Sweden are watching, then they can contact us and get games for to use in education. Um, but yeah, I guess the Victoria to Pony mod is <laughs> fairly po- accessible. Um, okay. Let's not think about. Yeah, it. Um, we're always working on making them easier to get into. So yeah. Do you have anything to add there? No. Nah. No? No. Nothing? No, no. Okay. As a gamer, um, will the old gods be the dress rehearsal for real games about nomads? Um, he suggests Rome to about Mesopotamia, African civilization, etc. Uh, <laughs> Have you thought about that? No. Well... Nomads. Uh, well, we have these roaming barbarians and... Rome 1, that was kind of awesome feature back then, but I don't know, we don't have any plans for any like dark ages or people movement thingy. Uh, well, you never know, we might do an, hey, let's make Henrik make an earlier DLC hmm? what? for CQ2. What are you going to force him into now? Nah, I'm just kidding, kidding. just because he has he's on holidays, so he can't defend himself today. Okay, this one I think you're gonna like from Fawcett. Are there plans to release Sviga Rike or make it play re-release or make it playable again? Uh, I think it's still playable. I think so too. It depends on the computer, maybe. Uh, it might be that Sviga One and Two are written in some arcane language that we didn't develop ourselves. So, uh, but I think the Sviga Rike actual board game would be a brilliant conversion to the iPad. Hmm. Maybe get someone to do that? Yeah, well, I'll let the biz dev people do it. So. Okay, biz dev people. First champs when Make we it happen. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jolef wants to know, will the end date of European Universalis 4 be, be so early that you, in order to continue, you'll need March of the Eagles? Uh, no. Because uh, I don't think March of the Eagles really works when you built up your nice Bengal empire. Because Bengal isn't on the map. Hmm. Or Ayutthaya. Or what about the Ming? Yeah, Ming needs to be nerfed. Or my great. You're very specific now. Yes. Yeah. Well, it doesn't work. No. Okay. Uh, we haven't really. We think that the end date. We currently include Napoleon, but it's the same Napoleonic mechanics as in EU3, so. Hmm. March of Eagles is a much better Napoleonic game. Yeah. You left also asked, will the grand campaigners, Crusader Kings, Hearts of Iron, ever get a post Hearts of Iron game to continue on their nation's story? Did you get that question? Yeah, no. uh, it's called East versus West. Uh, out this autumn, I think. Yeah, we, we got a lot of questions on East versus West and uh, people that are asking why not more information is released. It's coming, so just relax and be patient and you will yeah. absolutely hear more soon. It's a, it's a game we have high beliefs in and it's going to be awesome. Because you can you Okay, here's a forum question actually. Is there a lot of internal rules some our Paradox development staff may write on forums? Um, and somebody wrote, I remember one time a Paradox Development Studio developer got a help message through. What happened to him? Help message? I don't know. I don't know. Well, we have the rule that uh, no de- PDS developer can comment or anything about any other title that is published by PI. That's the only rule we have. Yeah, we post on Paradox Development Studio games yeah. and, and not on yeah. Paradox Interactive's uh, entire catalog because we should not... You know, it may look official if we post on yeah. a game we haven't developed. So. Yeah, to us post PDS. And as the only other rule is like follow the form rules and don't be a total asset. Yeah. No, please notice that I didn't say be an, <laughs> don't be an asset. I can because beep we... you otherwise. Um, beep! Hmm. We have no more questions. Yay! Well, we actually do, but I but probably skipped them. And I think oh. that... Uh, Dalla wants to know, is there anyone in the studio who had no idea about the Paradox Development Studio games prior to being hired? Learn to play on the job, Smiley. Probably quite a few, because yeah. we have programmers. 
that no it's just kidding uh, considering how some people uh, behaved in the last eu4 mp session i th think that or the previous one i think that some of the development team on eu no. <laughs> But Bo Boel is bad at in EU for MP. Yes, I'm horribly, horribly yeah. bad at it. Um, yes. So I will be. Mm. For some weird reason, the QA people are the best ones at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we play multiplayer in the office. Um, Quite a lot. Well, especially, oh God, yeah. the cursing from John and Chris, it's insane. Oh, well, I'm not, we're not the only one that whines. The no. <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot of drama and tension. Yeah, that it's kind of fun. We have a huge campaign. What is it? I think we're we're twenty five people in the session yesterday, and it works out nice. And I'm really really worried about forces Ottoman Empire, because I didn't pick a military idea. And I'm in the Mamluks. What's the most fun with the multiplayer? Crush your enemies, drive them before you, and hear the lamentations of their players. Yes, okay. okay. Um, could Steam matchmaking functionally be backported to older games like CK2 and Vicky2? Also, you guys are awesome. Crusader Kings 2 is brilliant, says GM Stan. Uh, on this question? Nope. 